Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman, and I hope all of you are having a wonderful day as we get things kicked off here with, uh, well, an entire show dedicated to our correspondent, Sandy Berger. Glad that she could join us. And yeah, this is going to be all about, well, digital assistance, and maybe we'll have time to do some other uh, interesting kind of things. But at the same time, you know, this is an area that is actually progressing very, very quickly in the consumer space because, you know, a lot of times it's, uh, it's, it, we don't see these large advancements, but I guess when you have some of the richest and biggest companies that deal with consumers all competing against each other, you see very, very large leaps in you know abilities. So Sandy, she has you know for a long time now been our resident expert, not just on consumer electronics such as phones, TVs, and things like that, but I am proud to say that she's probably the best one to speak to. Uh, about you know digital assistants and you know if you have one in your home what can they really do and which ones are really the best so yep we'll bring her on in just a moment uh, a couple things computeramerica.com show notes link to of course CompuKiss and any other articles that we talk about here today a link to the social media contest brought to you by Logitech and of course a link to the video portion where you can watch Computer America and not just listen so all that being said, waiting oh so patiently is the one, the only, Sandy Berger. So she runs CompuKiss. She is the president of the website and, of course, main contributor. And she contributes to many other publications. Sandy, how you doing? I am happy that we were finally able to get you on. It's been a couple weeks. And, uh, and yeah, you know, hey, I'm glad that, uh, that we could... So, with uh, with that being said, uh, unless you want to give any other kind of introduction, I think we should just get started with uh, digital assistance. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know, I've only been able to listen to the HomePod. They have one one on display. Um, I did not get a chance to try out the Macs from Google, but uh, the HomePod, and I did get to listen to it. But like the listening ex experience, I thought was actually really good. But you, as well as many other articles I find about this, I mean, it's not it's not really up to par for I guess for a lot of people. It's surprising. something that the other HomePods uh, didn't have, that the other vi virtual assistants didn't have. And we didn't get that except for one thing. The Apple HomePod sounds fabulous. The sound is excellent. Um, uh, it, it has some really deep sounds. Mid-range is good, treble is good. Um, just in general, uh, it's a pleasure to listen to it. Mm -hmm. However, don't buy one. The home don't buy a home pod. Right. And and you know you know me. You know I give an accurate assessment of the products as accurate as I can. And I don't think I've ever said to you, don't buy this. 
I, this, this yeah. time, I will say that there's some serious problems with it. Um, that, that the only way you really need to buy it is if you are an, a, a huge Apple fan, um, because uh, you have to use Apple Music with it, okay? And so you have to pay nine ninety nine a month for Apple Music, and then uh, the cost a month or a year. Pod. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, quick month or a year. Month nine ninety nine a month. Oh, 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 oh I, I heard nine ninety nine. Okay, so ten dollars a month for. Uh, okay, and and, right. and that's a you know, and I guess that's a huge uh, sticking point because a lot of these smart speakers they do claim to be, of course, speakers, and music is a big part of what speakers do. And uh, exactly, like so, so that must be a huge thing for you to bring that up immediately that it's tied to one music service. Well, see, the problem is that is the only music service that it's tied to. So if you go to an Amazon Echo or you go to a Google Home, uh, they can work with uh, Spotify. They can work with, um, what are all the other ones? Um, let's oh, see, uh, Spotify. Uh, Spotify, Pandora. Uh, there's, of course, YouTube. like YouTube, right? Yeah, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, they, Google Play. Uh, they pretty much work with everything. Mm -hmm. And this HomePod, the Apple HomePod, does not. It only works with Apple Music. Um, so I think that that's a big negative. Uh, the thing that amazed me about it was that it doesn't really, uh, when you, you sign up or you sign in, it doesn't work with your Apple iTunes library. Now, there are a lot of us who have been around for a while. We've been using iTunes. We store all our music in there. And uh, although Apple Music is great, they've got millions of, of tunes, um, you might want to play just your special music. And the only way you can do that is if you use iTunes Match, which costs another $25 a year. And That's awful. it just it really it's awful. Um and, and you know not to get too far from your point here, but I like oh, well I'm sorry, make your point and then I have some something I'll say about Apple in, in general, but go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh yeah, well I mean the thing that I was going to mention was that I mean, you know, for it doesn't seem like a big ask for Apple Music to work with iTunes to work with their latest product. But I remember there being a big uh, hubbub, kerfuffle, what have you, with uh, with the iPhone, I think it was like the iPhone 10, uh, also with the latest generation of MacBook Airs, where essentially if you had both, if you bought both of these devices, thousands of dollars spent, and you have them both right. in your hands, pull them out of the box, the two cannot be connected to each other. I guess they, they came with like a USB 2.0, one had a USB-C port. Um, there was really no way to connect these with a physical wire without a bunch of adapters. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with the HomePod. Like the services work, but maybe there's workarounds, there's adapters, there's, but it's not as seamless as Apple is used to getting credit for. Apple used to be just super simple and that's not the case now. That's right. Um, and they've really, in my opinion, they've really dropped the ball here in a lot of different ways. Um, this this idea that uh, it doesn't work with your iTunes library unless you pay them more money um, is amazing to me because you can take Google Play, uh, which is Google's music, you can set up it to actually import everything from your iTunes library. So Google plays music from your iTunes library as well as Alexa does but Apple doesn't unless you pay them an extra fee. Mm. Um, and we have to mention right away this, uh, to, to get the HomePod, which has Siri built in and has a beautiful sound, it's $350. So we're not talking a $50 uh, little I, iPod home or something like that. That gives the question that, I, I mean, you know, uh, we had been tracking it over the course of its development. It was uh, supposed to be out sometime in December. It got pushed back to early February. And now they released this. I mean, uh, and, and again, at like a 350 price point, I think maybe even they were expecting about a 300 price point. Um, I, I mean, with all this added cost, with the delays, with everything, and then the finished product coming out and being, I don't want to say, you know, panned but the reviews have not been favorable uh, you know f from you or from many others what what do you think was like the big problem with this device and of course we're going to dive into you know some of the other problems but what do you think was the cause the, of the, 
this. The biggest problem with the device is that Siri is just not, I was going to say she's the stupidest, uh, but <laughs> it's, I won't put it that way. She is just not up to par with the Google Assistant or with Alexa. The least of um, Yeah, she just, and you probably, if you have an iPhone, you, you know that already, mm -hmm. that you used to be totally amazed at what Siri could tell you. And that was at the beginning when there was no one else. But now other people have come up with their voice assistants and Siri just kept lagging behind and lagging behind. So when this HomePod came out and they worked so hard and so long on it, and they were the first ones to come out with a voice assistant in Siri, we were all expecting that Siri was just gonna blow us away. And maybe our expectations were high, but even so, um, she just didn't do it. I mean, she does not have the same smarts or as many smarts as the other voice assistants. She can't answer all the questions that I've asked her. And it, it's just an upsetting thing. Uh, if you're relying on her for a voice assistant, yeah. she's lacking. If you're relying on her for music, even though it sounds great, she still has problems. So across the board, um, I think Apple has blown it this time. That doesn't mean to say that they won't keep adding things like like Google does and like uh, Amazon does. I expect that uh, Apple is going to be adding things as we go and she's going to get smarter, Siri's going to get smarter. And the HomePod will get better because certain things like right now you can't you can't play um, music in more more than one room of the house, which right. you can do with the other products. Um, so I know she's already uh, Apple has already said some things will be added. She could in the end turn out to be fabulous, um, but I'm saying don't buy it now. I and and I I guess I'm trying to uh, rack my brain. It's you know not a good exercise, but I'm trying to rack my brain in thinking back to when. Uh, Amazon first released theirs and how intelligent was Alexa when she was first released and if I recall I mean she had a few skills she did work out pretty well and I guess the proof of concept that was launch Alexa at least gave people enough interest to develop new skills and that you know uh, and just as we've been saying over the past year every you know every couple weeks or even every week you go on and you see another company has made another skill uh, that you can now use your smart device for, you know, your smart speaker for. Um, and I, and I guess thinking back to Google, Google kind of came out and they weren't as advanced as, as Alexa at launch, but because they're Google, they at least put up a fight, you know, at, at least, uh, the Google home device was at least in the ballpark of what Alexa was. And then again, they continued to get better. It makes it, you make it sound like HomePod is not anywhere in that because you know uh the advancement of the software has long been a talking point of the smart speakers the software side gets developed continuously and i'm kind of encouraged right. that you say the hardware side is fabulous because that's one thing that you can't change it without is. buying but yeah right. i guess they just missed it yeah they, they miss the software side and i don't think apple is used to playing catch up yeah i don't understand it really although i have I have thought it through, and some of, sometimes their first devices have been a little lacking. For instance, the iWatch. Mm. It was a nice product, but the first generation was not that good. Second generation was a little better. Third generation is really good, okay? Um, but see, they can't do that with the HomePod because the other companies are just using the software, and they're not making the hardware better. Um, as you stated, you know, the, the hardware is going to be the hardware um, and it won't be updated. Right. And so I really don't know what their problem was. I know part of it is this this walled garden effect that Apple always has. Uh, they don't want to let anybody in. They don't want other people uh, creating too much because they have to keep their security. And maybe maybe their device is more secure than the others. They haven't proven that to me, though, if it is. They right. haven't showed that to me at all. Mm, so, and, and I guess the other part is that they have to show it to, uh, you know, to other people, Be because I think one of the things that made all the other smart speakers so, so awesome and what made them awesome so quickly was the opposite of a walled garden. It was, here's our APK, you know, here, here's our uh, developer right. kit. 
uh, come into our ecosystem, develop for us, and your customers can use our hardware with your software. And it really, you know, you can just go check out the skills that Alexa has nowadays. Thousands, thousands upon thousands. It's it's a right. really cool thing to see. I don't think Apple's going to do that. I, I mean, I, I don't think Apple's going to just let anyone, if, you know, the music is anything to go by, they're not going to let just anyone into their system, right? Right. Um, they're going to be a lot pickier, and that means they're going to have uh, less involved in the HomePod. I mean, less skills and less that it can do. Um, but right now, it doesn't even have Bluetooth, which is, again, really? amazing. Yeah, the only way you can um, you can hook it up to uh, your phone or whatever else is through AirPlay. So you have to have an iPhone. Uh. Oh, by the way. You have to have an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod Touch to set up the HomePod. They took every opportunity to go, what is what is our solution to this problem? Instead of saying, what is the common solution to this problem? What are people actually using? And instead they went, what are we using? That is biting them in the butt so hard. I, I, I really hope it does. Um, I hope it wakes them up because I think Apple is a great uh, company. They make some fabulous products. They brought us the iPhone and all this other stuff that's been great over the years. Um, I actually wanted this uh, product to be spectacular. But, you know, come on, when you can't, when other companies are trying to work together, um, like uh, Google and uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. they both are supporting their, their devices are both supporting Spotify. They're both supporting um, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, that sort of thing. And, and yet Apple can't have that. They don't have it to support it or they feel they don't have to support it. And maybe they'll add that later. I don't know. I personally think it's a wonderful thing to be able to use your virtual assistant as a radio. So when there's somebody on the radio that I want to listen to, mm -hmm. I just tell um, Google or Alexa, go ahead and turn this uh, FM radio station on or this AM radio station, and she can play it. Um, now, why why can't Apple do that? You know, and, and, and that's such a weird thing because uh, I think that the usability is coming here in the next couple of months. Uh, there was a law passing that all devices, like all smartphones, smartphones are built in with FM receivers uh, natively, and they're only accessed through like emergency situations, things like that. Uh, but right. uh, I, I believe there's some legislation going through saying that they, you know, because it's in there, everyone has to have access to it. You can't artificially shut it off just because you don't want people to know about it. Um, so soon, most smartphones, not just iPhones, but most smartphones will have an FM receiver. Uh, the HomePod, you know, probably has an FM receiver in it. Um, but you're right. It's probably just not turned on. That That's a pretty glaring uh, hole for Apple to, uh, like, I guess, right. I guess my question is, was that Apple considered this to be, if you're a music fan, if you are all about the music, this is going to be your smart speaker. This is going to be your device. And it seems like they, you know, first of all, they probably didn't even capture that because of their exclusive nature towards music. But I mean, who do you think, and Sandy, who do you think this really appeals to as a, as a device? Well, if you're an Apple fan and you're really stuck with Apple music, and I don't mean stuck with, but you're, you're really convinced that it's the best music supplier out there uh, and you want to use this device mainly for music, then it's a great device. I mean, it sounds great. Um, it plays, but you can only use it for that music. And since it doesn't have Bluetooth, you can't control, you can, you could hook up your, your, your iPhone or your iPod to by AirPlay to the HomePod, but you can't control the music by voice. Mm. You have to control the music from your, say, your iPhone. Well, that negates the idea that the HomePod isn't a voice activated device that you could use to play music. Hmm. So uh, it's, it's all kind of amazing to me, uh, the way they came out with this and the things that it's lacking. Um, the other thing that it's lacking is it doesn't have high res music. And when we get to talk about the uh, next, we'll talk about the Google Home Max, which is Google's uh, high end speaker that they just came out with and it supports high res music. 
Now, again, I think that's something that they could add later, but I'm not sure they're going to. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, we are poking around the uh, the Apple website and for audio sources here, um, I think this is the key to the problem that we're talking about. Um, they have listed here on their website audio sources. So, you know, people have lots of them. And so far, they only list Apple Music, iTunes, iCloud, Beats One, which Apple owns Beats, I believe. Owns. The, yeah, right. that's a radio station. And right. the only one you could get on the HomePod, yeah. Right. So uh, also Apple Podcasts and AirPlay, like you mentioned before. I mean, every one of those are only audio sources that Apple owns. That's uh, in and it's I, I guess the sympathy either comes out between um, Apple. It's a launch product and they're hoping, you know, maybe within the next six months, they're going to rapidly develop it. They're going to let more people in. It's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. Or the other part of me that gets no sympathy is Apple is pushing its own products and they're hoping to make more money by pushing people towards their own services. I, I can't tell which is which. Everybody does that. I mean, you do um, on a uh, Amazon Echo to play an Amazon Echo. The best thing is to be a Prime subscriber. You know, so at, uh, Amazon is getting services, money from services. Um, same thing with with uh, Apple, but Apple seems to do it blatantly yeah. like this. You can only do the HomePod good voice activated music if you subscribe to Apple um, Music. And Amazon doesn't, it's like Apple's hitting you on the head. <laughs> and Amazon is saying, come on down, folks. You'll enjoy it. Have a good time, you know. Uh, it's just a different kind of quality that it seems to have to me. So uh, so let's talk about it as a smart speaker. You have a couple of them in your home. You've been using testing. Uh, essentially, you're a little bit further than the rest of us when it comes to smart speakers because, you know, hey, they, they do offer a lot of uh, functionality. And I think people are slowly going to start. I, I mean, what was it? Um, the, most, the most commonly sold tech device on Amazon this year was the Amazon Echo uh, Mini or Dot. I don't remember which one. Dot. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dot. So, you know, people people are starting to realize that, hey, maybe, maybe we want this. Um, when you switched to, or at least you tried the Apple HomePod, what were some of the features or what were some of the most notable parts that you're like, man, if I was talking to Alexa, she'd have, she'd have done that. Well, um, it's like I said, it's just that Siri doesn't seem to have the smarts yet. And they've got to definitely improve upon that. And when they do, if they got her smarts up to the uh, the smarts of the others, um, then maybe, maybe it would be a choice to make if you are an Apple Music fan and you're an Apple Playboy. Um, you know, that would all, that would all work. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that... Uh, there's, like I said, not very little reason to buy it right now. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and, and again, at three fifty, the hit is at the top of the pile. I mean, it's not like it's a price argument that you could kind of uh, make, saying, "Oh, hey, at least it's a hundred bucks." Uh, no, exactly. this is at the top, and that means that there's every other option below it that you that people consider first. So, uh, with that being said, um, yeah, I, I, I mean. Why don't we go ahead and give final impressions of the Apple HomePod? Because you know, and I know you said uh, go elsewhere and things like that for 350, but I don't think we touched heavily enough on just it as a speaker. Because at least that in, in that one area, people did describe it as probably the best smart speaker. Just well, I guess just as a dumb speaker, it's a really good speaker. It, it is. It's an excellent speaker. They've got a lot of smarts built into the speaker. <laughs> um, so it, it can automatically adjust to the size of the room. It's got microphones uh, that will take the size of the room into um, into its uh, brain and then spit out the proper music um, so that if you move it around, um, you're going to have better sound quality. And there are some AB receivers and speaker setups that do that as well. Um, but this one is really good. And um, the, the, the competition, though, is there because Google came out with their Home Max, right. which, is, which is a high-end speaker that has the voice assistant built in. 
Oh, and, and just real quick before we move off of Apple and into uh, Google Home Max, um, did you get any white rings when you were testing the HomePod, by the way? No, I didn't, but I didn't put it on any wood surface either. Okay. Yeah, that <laughs> that was a very weird uh, report, and I don't think it was, it was every single person, but just some isolated incidents. So, uh, Right, that, and we should just tell everybody who hadn't, hadn't heard that, that the white, it was the white uh, HomePod, it comes in black and white, and the white HomePod, if you set it down on a, a wooden surface, it was leaving a white ring on it. Right. And Apple's response to that original, I hadn't followed it, but their original response was, uh, well, you could do this and you could do that and try this and try that. And if that doesn't work, just refinish the piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. j just fix it, I guess, was the solution. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go. But uh, but yeah. So anyways, that's uh, that's that. Now. You mentioned the the home Mac, so why don't you go ahead and tell people uh, about Google because they they've had a number of products existing and talk about you know their lineup and then where does the home Max uh, land? Right. Well, Google Home, as you know, came out with the original Google Home, which goes in the range of one hundred and twenty dollars, um, and that was to compete with the Amazon Echo, the bigger Amazon Echo. Um, and then they came out with the Home Mini, which is a small, like, um, hockey puck, a little bit bigger than a hockey puck size thing, that competed with the little one that uh, Amazon Echo has. And uh, those two little ones were only $49. The bigger ones were ranging right around $100. Well, just before Christmas, uh, Google came out with one they called Max, which I actually like the name a lot, mm -hmm. Home Max, okay. Um, and the thing about the Max is it is a high-end speaker, just like the HomePod is a high-end speaker. It's actually a little pricier than um, the HomePod. Instead of 350, it's 399. Now, I think that there's probably gonna be some sales on that soon, um, but maybe not, I could be wrong there. Um, I will tell you that it sounds wonderful. Um, just as I think that the, the HomePod sounds wonderful, the Google Max sounds to me, they're, they're both adequate. They're mm. both more than adequate. Um, they have all these woofers and tweeters and, and all that stuff that just uh, makes the sound, you can pump it up loud, but even at the higher volumes, it still gives you a full kind of clear, rich sound. Um, the bass is deep, but not overwhelming. It's just, it's just got a very, very nice so sound. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, oh, I should say what it looks like because it's big. Um, it is uh, 13 inches wide, seven and a half inches high, six inches deep, and it weighs 12 pounds. That's, so this that's is, big. Yeah. This is big. The home pod is much smaller. Um, and I was surprised by the size of it. When the box came, I was like, wow. Uh, then after that, I became amazed at the, the big bigness of the sound. Right. It's loud. It fills the entire room. Actually, in my home, I have an open um, living room and an additional room. And uh, the, the max fills the sound for both rooms. Hmm. The, the uh, beauty of it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, speakers, I mean, when you look at things like, uh, you know, like the Alexa or what have you there, or even the Apple HomePod, like, I think that's something that really speaks to the intelligence of Apple with the HomePod, where, you know, having the bigger size does give you the ability to put in bigger subwoofers. It gives you the ability to right. essentially vibrate more air, which gives you that fuller sound. If you can do that in a much smaller package, that's, that's technology at work, but you know the fact that they made the home max so big i don't really count that as a drawback that's just that's just physics you know that's just making sure sound sounds good right i i agree with that everything you said there um and it just like the home pod it automatically adjusts so uh i think they call it the google calls it smart sound technology right, right. and, and, um, and, and it Sandy automatically actually, adjusts uh, the 
Oh, and, 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 and I've stopped right there. Uh, music, which is subtly playing in the background, means that we're going to head for a break. And oh, hey, all right. come back. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Sandy will be continuing on with us. And everyone, Sandy Barker, Compu Kiss, as we talk all things, well, digital assistants. So the Apple HomePod and the Google Max. Everyone, we'll be right back. Computer America, right after this. Stay tuned. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 31 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And yeah, we are talking with the one, the only, Miss Sandy Berger. She is, of course, our resident consumer electronics expert. And, you know, hey, that uh, that does involve things, like I said before, such as phones and TVs. But, you know, that's uh, a little bit closer to the holiday season. And I'm really glad that we're taking this opportunity because, Apple missed the holiday season with their HomePod, but hey, that means that in February we get to talk all about it. So, uh, yep, if you missed any part of the HomePod review and anything that we said, feel free to go back and listen to it. The podcast of our show is just the entirety of the show rebroadcast on wherever podcasts are heard. So, Sandy joins us, continues on, and I'm sorry I had to interrupt you there, but uh, we were talking about the Google Home Max, and you mentioned Smart Sound, which is you know, kind of similar to what Apple did, but yeah. Right. It, it, it has the same type, although it's done differently, but it adjusts the equalizer settings to match the acoustics of the room as well as the music that you're playing. So if you move the Max, just like the HomePod, if you move it to a different area, it will self-adjust. Um, and um, I don't think because of the size of the Max, you won't be moving it around much. Right. Um, I have found a spot where it can, it can actually um, spread the audio out, like I said, over two rooms. So we're talking maybe 40 feet, and um, both rooms sound great. As a matter of fact, um, we've had it, we've had the the Max since about Christmas time, and in that in this short span uh, we've had people over to listen to it this is a like i said a 400 hundred dollar device and two of our friends have purchased one oh, just wow. because it sounds so good and uh they thought it was worth the price and i do too um so that's a, a big uh big credit to to the sound of the google um yeah uh, and and i mean that is huge credit to the google because uh when it came to speakers Honestly, I, I mean, my parents did. I kind of always, well, not always. I, I had a computer system, and over the past five, six, seven, eight years, I've had a device in my pocket that could kind of fill in the place for any kind of music I wanted or needed. But this idea that you have speakers in your home that play music is something that I guess a lot of people are coming back to. You know, personal devices are one thing, but you can't, you know, entertain a room full of people with an iPhone, there's just really not a good way. You, you have to go back to a speaker. So, right. Yeah. Talk, and the speakers okay. and the speakers do work together. Um, right. Just as you would think they would. So if you um, say to Google Max, you say, hey, Google, play such and such a song everywhere. And I've now set up a group of everywhere. Uh, it will play on all the Google Homes that I have, on the Google Mini that I have. It will also play on Chromecast devices. So it can play on my TV, 
because I have a Chromecast on the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it can play on Bose radios that I have a little $35 uh, Chromecast audio device on. Um, it's it's uh, really, really great. You have the, the sound going through your whole house. That is hugely important because, you know, uh, you're probably going to have a couple of these devices. Uh, you know, one speaker for two rooms may sound great, but uh, Google does offer, you know, a couple of those different options, like, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, 120 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, you're probably going to have a few of these if you really invest yourself in these. And then, of course, to what we were deriding Apple for, uh, Google, I think, is the king of this when it comes to interoperability with music stations and, you know, what to actually put on speakers there. You know, you get a lot of options, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you not only get a lot of options, but Google Play is very, very good uh, because, as I said earlier, you can take all your iTunes library, quickly import it into Google Play, and if you still use iTunes, you can set it up so that as you add more music to iTunes, it will go into Google Play. So, and Google Play has uh, an enormous amount that they let you put in for free. Um, actually, Amazon, Amazon Music only lets you in, import, I think, 250 songs. Mm -hmm. But in Google Play, you can import thousands of songs for free. Right. And so that, that gives you the ability where you, you don't have to have a music service if you don't want one. If you do want one, um, the Google Maxes right now, as we speak anyway, are um, coming with the 12 months of YouTube Red free. And YouTube Red is, uh, is most people don't know it as a music service, but it is not only a music service, but a television service as well. So, Right. Yeah, there, there's, uh, there's a couple different services coming to, uh, to YouTube Red. And, you know, they're still fleshing out their cable side. They're hoping YouTube Red turns into a cable uh, competitor or at least a catch-all for cord cutters. But you're right. It, it is a music service. You get, you know, the latest songs without ads, which YouTube is infamous for, all the ads. But, hey, you pay a, a little bit a month and you don't have to listen to ads at all. So, I mean, that's uh, that's just awesome. So, all of this said, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm kind of watching it. Uh, folks, if you're, you know, kind of uh, listening instead of watching, uh, Sandy gave the dimensions earlier. But, honestly, I like the picture of it in the kitchen that Google has because... It's about the size of a toaster, maybe a little deeper than a toaster, but it's about right. the size of a toaster. And you can stand it on end, you can lay it on its side, uh, or you know, at least you know, kind of horizontal or vertical. And I mean, this thing seems very, very, uh, you know, powerful. I, there's no other way to put it. It seems very powerful because it can fill that room. It can play all those different things. Do you find yourself, you know, gravitating towards Google? Because you've been an Alexa supporter forever. Yeah, you know, that's absolutely amazing. My husband and I had a, a discussion about that. He, in fact, wrote some things for the CompuKiss website talking about how he liked Google better uh, than Alexa. And I was, I was a big Alexa fan because I had been from the beginning. But Google is starting to win me over. I'm beginning to think my husband is right. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, Google is getting smarter and smarter. Um, for instance, if I say to um, the Amazon Echo, I say, uh, Lexi, give me the weather report for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll go, th or tell me what the, how, no, no, I'll say, tell me how cold it's going to get tonight. And she'll go through the whole weather report, okay, mm -hmm. which is fine. But if I say to Google the same thing, I say, Google, tell me how cold it's going to get tonight. Uh, Google will say it's going to get down to 20 degrees. Uh, like, you know, give like the real answer. Yeah. Give the Giving the real answer. And I'm seeing that more and more as they improve both uh, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. I'm seeing Google Home kind of become superior because it's giving better answers. Um yeah, that the, that that's one of those things where I think Amazon just can't, you know, j just really won't be able to compete on as fine detail of a level as Google because where Amazon can prop would probably be able to stand out when it comes to getting packages to your door if you said, you know, uh, 
Alexa, buy me laundry detergent, you know, uh, that entire process, if you have it set up right, you know, you could probably get a physical bottle of laundry detergent to your door easier than it would be through Google. Um, but at the same time, Google and answers, I mean, let's face it, uh, the term Google, it used to be a uh, Google Plex and it used to be a number, has now become uh, a, a synonym for search. It's in the dictionary to right. Google something <laughs> is to search something. So it makes sense to me just because of the companies behind it that Google would be better at communicating with people. And it is. It's becoming very obvious that it is. And the Google, the Google Home Max can do everything that the Google Home device does, including turning lights on and controlling different things, shopping, ordering pizza, whatever it is you want to do, uh, the Macs can do it. I should say, uh, Macs, you can also buy two and set it up as a stereo pair. Personally, I think you'd have to have a pretty large room to really get the benefit of that. Um, so I'm not going to be getting another one anytime soon. Um, but the fact of the matter is that you can do it. And on top of that, the Max has the best microphones. Um, it, it, it's just this far field communication stuff that they have that's great. So I can stand, I can have the music on at a normal volume. Mm -hmm. Google playing music. I can stand 30 feet away. Now this is again an open room that I have. 30 feet away and say, you know, the, the words H-E-Y Google. <laughs> I don't want to say it because right. I'll turn my phone on. Um, but and she responds immediately or he responds immediately because that's the other thing that google has that amazon hasn't even got yet um where you can change the uh, male or female voices hmm. yeah, that, that, that's uh it seems like such a small thing but at the same time it kind of speaks to the amount of development because you know making an entirely different voice that doesn't sound like a weird computer alien uh, that does take a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. And it's kind of cool that Apple has decided that was a priority. Right. Um, not Apple, Google. Oh, go that Google <laughs> has made it a now, priority. Now, Siri, Siri, as you know, has different voices. Uh, even on your iPhone, she has different voices. But um, but the, the whole thing is that, that Google is doing some of these things that are really making their devices superior to the others. And it's amazing because, again... Google came out quite late um, after, what, almost two years? Yeah. After Alexa came out. And uh, it, I guess my question would be to, uh, you know, to Google is that where, you know, where does this service kind of end up for them? Because, you know, having a smart speaker in, in and of itself is great. But do you think that Google is... Yeah, because we all know the, the purpose of an Alexa. It's to get you further invested into Amazon and to get you to purchase things and order th things and browse things through Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. Google, uh, apparently, Apple is there for their own music services. Google. Everyone uses Google. Google is uh, part of everyone's lives. Where do you think Google ends up? with their Macs or any other uh, of these smart devices, do you think they just want to be kind of the hub of uh, of a smart home? Well, yeah. I mean, if they develop their ecosystem so that, that you have to buy devices that work with Google or work with, you know, somebody else, um, Google can, can actually have a whole ecosystem. And they have improved their shopping. I think we're going to see more and more of that. Um, there, you can now shop on your, your Google device for Walmart, Target, right, and right. all these others. Now, it's not as easy as Amazon yet. But again, they keep adding things. Now, um, a couple months ago, I would have said, if you like audiobooks, you have to buy the Amazon Alexa. Mm -hmm. And the reason is she re reads audiobooks very, very easily. Well, now Google and the Google Max, all the Google devices can read books as well um, if you buy those books through Google Play. So again, if you have a lot of audio books um, through Amazon, you're going to want to stick with, with that if you want to listen to audio books. But Google has just recently added that feature. So they're increasing their ecosystem. 
Um, they're going to have books, they're going to have music, they're going to have um, shopping. Um, and I think it's taking a little longer than they want it to get the shopping uh, correct. I tried to order some things through the Google Home device for Christmas mm -hmm. and I found it cumbersome. Right. Yep. Yeah, and you can't it, have shopping to be cumbersome. It's got to be easy. What What was the pain point? Was it uh, you know? Did it ask you for things that it should have already known? What was What was the pain uh, point? It wasn't. It just didn't make the process clear. You had to ask Google for a certain thing, and you could only get a certain thing. In other words, the Walmart Google store was only so big, where Amazon is the entire Amazon store. Right. So you could, so I first of all couldn't get everything that I wanted, and I didn't realize that. I thought I could get anything from Walmart. Um, then I found out I couldn't, and then I had tr some trouble ordering it. Now this was when they first came out for Christmas with the Walmart shopping through Google. So maybe even by now, two months later, they've gotten it a little bit better. I don't know. I haven't tried it again. Mm -hmm. But that's what. That's what I think. I think all of these um, devices are trying to develop uh, an ecosystem to grab you and hold you in. Yep, and and I think uh, you know going way back to Apple, they they did it backwards. They created the ecosystem. Uh, now it's everyone else's responsibility to bend to their will or to abandon what they already know and get in there. Whereas, really, I think you're right with Amazon, they let people in, they say, hey, you know, if you want to work with us, it's great. And I really just get the feeling between Google and Amazon, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of like Bluetooth, it's kind of like Wi-Fi. It's not so much that they're going to force you to, you know, cut a deal with Google. It's more the customers are going to be so dependent on either of these ecosystems. If you don't work with Google or Amazon, then people just won't care about your product. It's not going to be strictly Google putting pressure. It's going to be the consumer. That's right. That's right. And Apple has been has gotten this reputation as being superior, superior to the PC, superior to the other phones. Um, and now other companies are catching up. So it's not quite as superior, but it still has the superiority complex, <laughs> which right. says we can charge more money than anybody else for our products and our people are going to buy the products just because they're Apple products. And I think that is slowly fading. Um, you see that with the the iPhone X um, or iPhone 10, I should say. Right. Um, it's not selling as well as they thought it was going to. Um, and the, the Note, the Galaxy Note, which is about the same price, is uh, selling really well. Um, so Apple is kind of sitting back on their laurels a little bit here. And I think that they've got to come out with some uh, unique things, which they could still add to the HomePod or to some of these other devices, but um, they haven't done it lately. And a lot of people like you and me, Ben, are, are just saying, hey, I've had a lot of Apple products in the past, but maybe it's time to go with somebody else now. Yeah, you know, if, if they aren't, you know, even if you don't feel forced, even if you still feel that Apple, at least their quality is, is about the same, if not their if not their innovation, then you can at least look at others and go, wow, their quality is about as good as Apple. And trust me, I think Apple breathed a big sigh of relief when the, essentially, you know, the government put the kibosh on Huawei, which is a huge uh, Chinese phone manufacturer. Uh, coming yeah. in, coming into the United States, because I think between Samsung, between Huawei, maybe to a lesser extent the Google Pixel, but uh, yeah, you know, all of them combined would have really given mm -hmm. Apple a run for their money. Yeah, I think you're right, and uh, I think Apple's got a run for its money right now in some other countries too with the iPhones. Right. Um, so you know, because the the Chinese phones and the Korean phones are undercutting the price of the iPhones and giving people as many um, features as the iPhone is. Um, if you look at, at it from country to country, you'll see that uh, Apple is kind of either going down or holding its own while these other phones uh, go up dramatically. Right. So, and uh, of course, speaking about running for your money and this other thing, one trend that we're starting to see more of, and I think really it's, it's, <laughs> gonna kind of be the end result. I, I, I don't think that Google 
is ever really truly going to be the next great hardware manufacturer. I think it's just not in their blood. I think, I don't know if it's the partnerships they've built up, but I just kind of don't really trust Google to make hardware consistently. And I don't think Google even wants to be a hardware manufacturer. But many... I think they do. I think they do, Ben, but I think it's something that's coming slowly to them. Yeah. For instance, their first phone was a flop. The Pixel phones are wonderful, um, but they haven't gotten as much um, fan appreciation as mm, they right. probably should have. But you take a look at this Google um, Google Max, and it's got stuff in there that will let it grow. For instance, the uh, the ability to play high res music, that is something that. A lot of people think of coming on now. I love high res music. I think it sounds fabulous. And Google has their hardware set to to go ahead and play that. Now, I might be wrong, but I do think that they're going to stay in the hardware um, arena, at least um, be competitive there. Right. And, and, uh, and I mean, that entire sentence I said was probably really sounded, you know, harsh on Google. But the thing that I wanted to say was that uh, a lot of other speaker companies, you know, companies that are much more tuned in to the hardware speaker side of this, uh, Sonos, Bose, uh, I think there was uh, another one started with, uh, with an S. Anyways, there are lots of speaker companies that are probably going to be using the intelligence of a Google or an Alexa, but then they use their own speakers. And, you know, hey, they have their built-in uh, diehard fans. They have... Uh, a right. lot of experience with the hardware side. What do you think about just generally good speaker companies getting into the smart speaker territory? Everybody's going to be getting into the smart smart speaker or smart products uh, before too long. Um, Sonos is using Alexa now and doing it very well. I think Sonos makes a, a wonderful speaker, a uh, very, very good sounding speaker. And actually, um, they compare in price to, to these high-end speakers we were talking about today. So they can um, have their speakers with smarts in them. And I just read that at the New York toy, uh, toy Show this year, uh, Alexa is going to be on the stage really? in various toys. So I don't know exactly which toys those are, but they were talking about games that Alexa will be able to play with you or you will play against somebody else and she'll provide the background for it. And so when you talk about saying something like, are there going to be more smart speakers? Yes, definitely. Uh, there's going to be smart toys. There's going to be smart everything. And it's all coming. We saw the beginning of it at CES this year. Uh, it was dramatic, the number of booths and the number of products that had Alexa built in or had Google built in. Um, and cars, same thing. You know, there wasn't, I don't think there was a car manufacturer that didn't say our next models are going to have our voice activation built in. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's, uh, that is something very interesting. I, there was a, there was a company I'm, tr I, I can't remember it. They, they are a speaker company and essentially they want to, or they're really getting into the smart car technology and you're wondering like, you know, uh, Google was kind of out of, out of left field, but then you have like Ford working on smart cars, makes a lot of sense. Right. And then you had uh, a speaker company s develop its own division of smart cars. And you're like, well, that's, that's kind of weird. It made you realize that a lot of these entertainment companies, a lot of these speaker companies, they want to be the, not only the speaker system, but the operating system that entertains people while they're being driven around, because that's going to be a big market is what do people do when they're not driving? And, you know, companies see that, they, they see an, an opportunity to be that interaction. Right. And, you know, it's not just driving around. All the TV manufacturers, the large TV manufacturers that uh, demonstrated their where is the CES this year, um, they were also having um, Alexa built in or Google built in to the new televisions. So now, you know, in a way that's mind boggling for the per person who's going out to buy a TV, because now they have to decide not only what type of TV, how big, what features, but they have to decide if they want to go with a company that's uh, 
doing Alexa or a company that's doing Google. Now, mm. yeah. in other devices, there's companies that are doing both, and that I'm seeing more and more of that. But that was not true of the this year's televisions, as far as I could see. Um, Samsung was going with one party, LG was going with another. Um, you know, so you have to make that decision too. That is definitely a good point because you know these ecosystems. I think right now, uh, aside from Apple. The other two, you know, they kind of matter and they kind of don't. I feel like companies out there, they, they say, you know, uh, especially things like Uber and Domino's and, you know, services you may use otherwise, they're like, oh, well, if we have an Amazon, uh, you know, service or skill developed, well, then we should make one for Google. Like a lot of companies right. are, are, are being just agnostic. Uh, I, I hope, honestly, as a consumer, that doesn't change. I hope everyone develops for everyone else. That'd be great. But that might not happen. Well, it it does seem to be going in that direction, and I like you. I'm thrilled to hear that. Uh, when there's a a light bulb that says, "Okay, we're going to work with Google, we're going to work with Apple, and we're going to work with uh, Alexa, mm -hmm. all three. I mean, that that I think is a wonderful way to be because it's it really helps the consumer that they don't have to make a decision on which one of these they want to go with. Now, obviously. You can have all of these devices in your home at the same time. I happen to have that. Uh, so I have I have Google Home right next to this one, right next to the other one. And uh, they don't interfere with each other. So that's something a lot of people have asked me. Um, say you have your lights attached to, uh, to Google, to Siri, to um, Alexa. Right. And you, you use one to turn the lights on. You can use the other to turn the lights off. Uh, it doesn't matter. They're all they all have the same smarts as far as home automation goes. Um, so that's just something to consider. Uh, like when you're buying a television, okay, say you buy a television that has uh, Amazon Alexa built in. Well, you could still have a Google Home right next to it or HomePod right next to it. Um, so you don't have to actually choose only one ecosystem to use. Although you'll lean in that direction, right. without a doubt. Um, and so you should try to pick the one that you think is going to be best for you in the future. Right. And, and, and you know, par part of me hopes that some software developer out there uh, is cheeky and they start telling, you know, uh, I don't know, your mama jokes to each other. If they're within the same room, that would be entertaining. Uh, you know, if Siri started to pick on Alexa or something like that, I think that'd be hilarious. But uh, but no, they they play nicely with one another. But I, I mean, you know, j just for the average consumer, if you're not writing uh, a great website for reviews and things like that, people are just going to need one, right? Like, there's really not too much benefit to having two. No, um, there isn't. Uh, there's some benefit to it. So you know, these things are not perfect. And if one of my devices goes out for a minute or says come back later or I've got a problem, I can turn to the other device. Okay. So it does have it does have some benefit. For uh, an average home, I'd say uh, there are still reasons to go with one or the other. Uh, like right now, audiobooks is the big, big reason to go with the Amazon products and shopping. Um, right. Google Home has definitely has the music sewed up. I mean, they have the best products as far as music because of Chromecast and everything else that they they do, and they do it very well. So like on my Macs, I can just say, um, you know, I can just say Google play such and such on the television and whether it's a Netflix or um, a music uh, video, it'll play it automatically. See, which is really really nice yeah and yeah. that's super nice and uh just real quick uh the music is in the background but just real quick uh we see here your take give out letter grades to the google max and the apple homepod uh the google max gets an a i'd like to see it a little bit less expensive but it still gets an a and the homepod gets a d um <laughs> it can it can get better it can improve but and, right now yeah. uh, again it gets a D. Let, let's hope it does. And, you know, as we said before, 
all of these every one of them that we've talked about today will improve and change over time so that's awesome to hear uh folks if you want to see more in some of those articles we were talking about here uh of course compukiss.com we have a link to it in the show notes and sandy i just want to say i uh, missed you last couple times but hey thank you so much for joining us it's uh yeah look forward to next month as well okay i've already got stuff to talk about next month <laughs> Perfect. Great to hear it. And everyone else, okay. tune in next month as well. As well as, let's see, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, we have Computer America fresh and ready to go every single day. Everyone, have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.